good morning YouTube. So last night I played around a little bit with a USB thumb drive and I was able to get the procedure down for booting the Raspberry Pi off a USB drive. It was just a little quicker with the thumb drive and it uses a bit less power and I just wanted to make sure that I could boot off of a USB drive by itself so now what I've done is I've put the SD card back in and then I've got my SSD with the M2 adapter. So what I want to do first is I've got to boot off of the SD card and then this should auto mount and then we can go on to this drive and edit the config.txt file so that we boost the USB current up. I'm not sure if I actually need to do that, but I figure I might as well eliminate all the variables here. And I want to go and see if everything's mounted here. So when it mounts, it goes to media pi. There's root fs. And there it's blinking on the SSD. And there's your boot folder. And it's saying 4, 4.8 gigs. Well, so it looks like maybe that's there. So let's do a shutdown right there. And then we'll go over here and I'm going to pull the SD card out. But that little, little tool they include is really handy for doing that. And let's see what happens here. So it tries to boot off of the SD card there. You've got the red LED. And I see the access light there. There we go. I think I'll let it go sit for a while. The red LED isn't flashing. That was the problem I was having last night. I had a bad image burnt on the SSD. Just to show you what the thumb drive does here, I'll pull the US the SSD out and put in a thumb drive just to see the difference here. So we should have a few seconds. Yeah, there we go. You can see there's a slight delay. But now we're, let's see, we're 75, and then it jumps up to about 180 milliamps on the thumb drive. And you see we get the disk activity light there. Yeah, so I might not have my image burnt on here properly. So that's what I've, I'll have to try that again. And is there any media? Yeah, there's no media mounted because this one is the root file system. Yeah, so I've got to play around with burning the image to this and make sure I get that right. I'll just do this. I'll shut down and then I want to put this back in. Yeah, so let's boot up and I want to look at how this thumb drive gets mounted. There's all your files, config, config.txt and everything. So, yeah, I have not properly burn the image on this one. So I'm going to have to try that. And the thing I haven't done yet is I haven't formatted this. So I'm wondering if I need to format it first and then burn the image. I've just been using Etcher to pick this up and write the image on there. So I'll be back in a minute once I try a few variations there. Okay, YouTube, so temporarily gave up on trying to boot off of the SSD. I've tried several things. I tried formatting it for a FAT32 and NTFS. And I can get on the system. I resize the EXT4 partition, and all of that sort of thing works. Uh, I ran the GParted tool. But anyway, I was looking around and there's this tool called Berry Boot. So I've loaded the Berry Boot image on the SD card. And now I've just finished. I formatted the SSD and set the SSD up as my destination. And I've just downloaded the Raspbian Stretch image. I'm rebooting. So you boot into the Berry Boot utility. So I guess she's partitioning yeah, so it's going to boot there so you can see we have Debian stretch so the idea with Berry boot is you boot on the SD card into that bootloader and then you can have multiple operating systems loaded on. so I think that actually might be 
kind of a nice setup because then I can put uh, RetroPie, I can have the Raspbian stretch image, uh, there's also the PyTop OS that I can load. You can also have it boot directly into like OpenELEC and Kodi. Yeah, they give you the whole drive there, 458 gigs. And let's see, there's my boot partition, config.txt, all that stuff there. So you set up your Wi-Fi or Ethernet configuration. You do that in the uh, Berry boot, and then it just comes into, uh, in this case, Raspbian, and it's pre-configured for you. So that's kind of neat. So I was booting off of the USB thumb drive, that works fine, but I just could not get it to boot off of the SSD directly. So I don't know if there's something with the USB to M2 adapter that's a little different, because when I boot off the SD, I can see boot and root FS partitions, but when I try to boot off the SSD, I don't see the boot partition and it won't boot so there's something strange I don't know if it's a startup delay or something gets messed up I can see the partitions in Windows I can see them when I boot up off the SD card but this way you boot off the SD card into Berry boot and then you have multiple operating systems so you can uh, I can go here shut down and I believe you just log out. Yeah, I guess if you, you have to reboot to get to the new OS. Maybe I never shut down all the way. So let's see what happens here. Let's see, so this is Berry Boot. So edit menu. So that's where I have that. So I can add an OS. So right there I could load Open Elec. There's Ubuntu. And there's others here. So I could load RetroPie, there's Kali Linux, Raspbian Lite. Yeah, see there's a little timeout before it checks the partition. And I can just boot that right now. And now you can see, if we swing down there, we're booting off of the SSD now. So the thing is, I have 500 or 470 gigabytes of storage. Might as well use it for multiple operating systems, I guess. It takes about as long to uh, boot into the Berry boot off the SD card and then select it from the screen as it does to wait for the, the timeout on the no SD card boot. So actually, I don't think you're losing any time. I think this is going to work because then I can uh, load this up with multiple operating systems if I want to try something out. So let's go in, we'll try to load uh, Open Elec. So I just went up here and picked Open Elec, and I'll just download that. And this is running over my home Wi-Fi network here, so 25 to 30 megs a second. So let's see, exit. Oh, okay, they bumped the GPU memory. Okay, so that's good. And this should be open elec. Oh, so they still have the older the older interface. Okay, there we go. I think that's working. Let's see, you want to go. Oh yeah, this is the older interface. So if I do a reboot, it should go back into Berry Boot. Yeah. So there we go. We have two different operating systems. Yeah, so let's see, we'll, we'll boot into this one. And we'll boot into Raspbian here. I just want to see what, what they've done for the file system. So if we go here, yeah, because the, the open elect only takes like a hundred and, hundred and some megabytes. So I guess they, they just make a separate partition or something. Yeah, so it looks like everything's working there. I think this might be the the way to go with this because that's kind of what I wanted to do with this system is be able to try different things out and if it's just as easy as booting in load a new OS and then boot it because otherwise you have to open this thing up 
pull the SD card out, burn a new image, put the SD card back in, boot it up, configure it, and here you just keep loading images on that SSD. But you can see here that the SD card is not running here, and it's all the activities on the SSD. Actually, that that is a, a good result. I think that's that's perfect. Now, the one I want to try to get on back on here is the PyTop OS. I found that on another Berry Boot server, so I need to figure out how to change the server. I might try that other. Berry Boot server. I I have to find out how to get that loaded. I I don't know if you have to load the image from that site because he has dozens and dozens of operating systems images to load, where this one only seems to have maybe one dozen, and the other one has the PyTop OS. So I could get that image back on. I think this has uh, got some promise. So I'm gonna. Put this away for now, get back to work today. I'll uh, come back for an update and put that video over here on the left side. And if you have any questions or suggestions on what to uh, look for, post up in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching.